Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Kendra and I'm painting with watercolor today. I have to tell you first off, I've been doing this for about two months and I'm loving it. Not watercolor. I'm loving the watercolor, but I've been doing that for like 10 years. Making these little videos is so much fun. And then when I get this sweet comments or thoughtful, insightful comments, um, it's very, very, it's just a treat. So thank you for being on the other side and actually watching some of this stuff as I learn how to video edit and, um, and show you my process. Um, also, it encourages me to paint more often, which is really my primary goal in starting this whole thing with YouTube. So I'm very happy with how it's going so far. Now what I'm working on today is a scene from a recent hike in the Columbia River Gorge. Part one is um, just the previous video is part one of this where you can see where I got about as far as I got to where I'm starting here. And it's quite a, as I look at it, I think, my gosh, it looks like I was eating magic mushrooms as I was walking through the forest because this is very sort of Dr. Seuss going on here. And those mossy trees look even more mossy in my picture than they do in real life. <laughs> I'll put up a picture right here of the actual image that I took. Um, while we were on our hike, and so you can sort of see what I was going from. I was very impressed with how the red leaves that had dropped in the fall were still red um, on the ground, because over here in the city, most of those green leaves have turned to real brown color. A lot of them have been collected already, um, but we put our leaves on our garden, and so our garden leaves are looking really brown. They're not looking red at all. And so at the falls, at La Terrelle Falls, where we hiked, I was impressed by the moss on the trees and the red carpet of, of old leaves that was still somehow vibrant, at least to my eyes. So the tools you're seeing me use here are um, a really cheap brush. This brush is a $5 Robert Simmons brush. It's um, on the side it says E85 round size 12 and it's his expression line. I was looking at it the other day thinking like gosh I use this brush more than anything else. I wonder what it even is and then I went on Blick Art to see and I'm like wow I'm using a $5 brush like I have $50 brushes in my collection that are like sable hair and you really don't need that. This is a great brush. If I was gonna go back in time and tell myself what to get when I'm starting watercolor, I would say get this brush and then go to Goodwill and find some kind of white porcelain tray or plate because that's what you're seeing right here on the screen. It's my favorite palette for about four or five years now. Um, also, there's a little yogurt lid. Actually, that's what I started with when I started painting. I just used yogurt lids and that works just fine. I would tell myself to find sticks in the woods because they're great blending tools. Um, my swish water is in a Talenti uh, dairy-free sorbetto um, plastic container. It's very dimensionally stable. Just very different from like a yogurt container that can kind of bend and get kind of gross over time. Those Talenti um, containers, one, of course it's delicious to eat your ice cream. So if you need an excuse to go buy some nice ice cream, get some Talenti um, and just tell your spouse or whoever that you're looking for a swish water container. It's an art supply. <laughs> That's an emery board that I'm using right there. You can use sandpaper, but I like the emery board because it fits into my pencil case really nicely. And I really like using watercolor pencils, but if I was on a budget, I would just only buy the black one and not get all the other colors to start because I use down the black one fastest for sure. And that's like, what, $2.50, I think, for one pencil maybe less. I don't know. 
So I'm going in and doing a technique called glazing where I'm just going over the colors I've already painted and putting on another layer and kind of timidly going in actually. Um, but the good thing about that is it um, slowly bumps up the values. So I was noticing that I really like the contrast between the very light purple color of the path and the really dark colors that approach it. So I'm bumping up all of the colors right along the path and it might not be on film, but it might, I'm not sure, but I know that I retraced the path with um, the watercolor pencil to just give it a little bit more of a bump. And um, yeah, so I just keep going over and over and over it and kind of timidly bumping up those values using even shaving off um, a little bit of that watercolor pencil into some wet paint in order to bring in some darker texture without changing that green. And you'll see a little bit later on in the video, I will take some blue painter's tape and cover up those trees because I wanted to go into the background, but I didn't want to paint around all of the trees that I had just drawn in. And so I just cut some blue painter's tape to cover up the trees and then I just stuck it there. You'll see in a little bit. And then I was able to just paint all the way across without worrying about um, getting like the blue sky into my green, you know, mossy trees. So we're coming up on, we're coming up on my 11th year of painting with watercolor. This is not my primary job. Actually, my primary job at the moment is that I teach my teenagers at home. We also use an online charter, so they have um, teachers that give them grades, but um, I spend my days working with them. Um, and before the pandemic started, um, I spent my most of my days um, practicing architecture because that's my that's what my degree is in. That's the thing I've been doing for a little over twenty years. Been licensed for twenty years now. Watercolor is something I came to when my twins were two. They were two, and I tell you. Being a new mother and having two of them is a trial. And I stayed with them all the time. I barely had babysitters or anything. I mostly took care of them. I practiced architecture in the evening when my husband would come home or on the weekends when he was home, he could take over for that and I would do my work. Um, but by the time they were two, I was tired. And so we flew out my husband's mom from Uganda. Yes, my husband is from Uganda, thus my last name, which sounds different than anything you've ever heard, probably. Um, and so we flew her over here for, I think it was two months. Could have been three months, but it was long enough that I could sign up for an evening class through the continuing education at our local community college. And the teacher taught in a high school art room. So it's very local high school, just a mile and a half from our house. And she taught Thursday evenings from seven to nine. And that was fantastic. It was I could get away, first of all, I could get away from the twins during the witching hour, which is, yeah, right about bedtime when they are the tiredest, but they don't want to go to bed. And my husband would have to deal with that all by himself or with his mother, <laughs> at least for the time she was there. And anyway, after she went back to Uganda, I just kept signing up for the same class, actually, the same teacher, <laughs> the same students, we all signed up term after term. 
um, with the same teacher. And eventually the teacher decided to retire from teaching and moved somewhere else. And so we decided as students that we would keep, keep our seven to nine Thursday night time slot and keep painting with one another. So we did we kept finding different places to go. Um, once we rented out a, an art room at a local art store, they had a little, a room for teaching classes and they weren't using it on Thursday evenings. So they would rent it to us. And after a while they decided to use that side for merch. So then we went to a community center and, um, we stayed there until the pandemic started. And of course the community center closed up. Now you can see here, I'm working very fast. Actually, I'm not, I was working so very slow that I sped this up to four times the speed because I was cutting pieces of blue painter tape and then sticking it on. Whenever you see a very slow art video on YouTube, that's authentic. If they're all sped up like this, that's just not how art works. And I know it's kind of boring to watch, but when you're doing it, it's wonderful. Just the slow motion stuff and either listening to music or sometimes I like to put on another artist who's talking on YouTube and I mostly listen to what they're talking about. And sometimes I look up generally, I'm so into my own work that I just use it as background, which is actually what I hope a lot of you do. If you can just turn this on and then get all of your materials out and start working on your own thing, that's, I think, the best thing ever. So now I'm getting all that painter's tape on, mostly so that I could paint in the background without being bothered by the trees. But you know what? The nice contrast of the really dark painter's tape, it gave me a different idea. It gave me an idea that I really should bump up the value of the tree trunks um, way more than I had and that perhaps they didn't need to be green. I thought to myself, hmm, maybe they don't, maybe they don't need to be green and they're not green in the real thing. So there we go. I go in with some blue and I'll dab it away with a little bit of paper towel and then I'll go in with some more blue and dab it away again in the very slow way. Remember, this is four times speed, so nobody paints this fast. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it looks very funny as I'm looking back on it now. All right, now we slow back down. So this is the idea I got. I thought I would use some materials that I had made before and cut them up. And there we are. I, t I just glued them right down and that's the finished piece. Here we are, sitting in the van, having some lunch. Is something you're not going to put this on YouTube? Totally putting it on YouTube. Lunch today, masaman, pumpkin, mm -hmm. kabocha pumpkin. And the lentils. There's lentil in here? Mm-hmm. And, and some potatoes. Thank you. 